Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for March for Capricorn, March 2013. So if Capricorn is your rising sign or Capricorn is your sun sign, then this is for you. Um, some of you may have listened to my original uh, Capricorn March horoscope and noticed that it disappeared. Um, I have a new offering that I was really excited about, and I got distracted from the horoscopes in the recording. So I decided to re-record and um, give you all the information that I wanted to give you from an astrological perspective, and um, I'll give you the information on where you can check out my new offering a little bit later. So in the cosmos in March for Capricorn, there's a tremendous cluster of planets in the second and third houses. So the second house is the area of finances and material possessions. So that, ruled, that rules everything relating to um, money, things, um, self-reliance, and the perspectives of all of these things. There are always many layers um, that of representation of houses and signs in charts, and um, in I try to go as deep as I can while bringing practical information, but just know that there's always many other layers of representation of, of a house. So wherever there's a cluster of planets, there's a cluster of energy. So hopefully, March will be very prosperous and bring in new, um, new um, layers of self-reliance and financial improvement. Mercury is also going retrograde in, at one of the placements that I'm referring to. Mercury is going retrograde in the second house. So there are some general implications of Mercury retrograde, which I've spoken about in previous um, horoscopes, and there are some specifics depending on your sign, depending on what house Mercury is going retrograde in. So when Mercury goes retrograde in the second house of finances and material possessions and the views on them, then many of you are going to be rethinking your finances. Um, some of you might have a lot of things, and maybe you think you have too many things. Um, I myself and many of my friends have gone through a downsizing process um, over the years of uh, trying to adjust our relationship with um, material things. So it's possible that you could have created a lot of wealth and then you had a lot of things and you look around and say, what are these things? You don't even know what they are, but you keep buying them and um, then you start to notice that you spend half of your time buying things and half of your time getting rid of things because you don't even know what they are and why you have them. <laughs> and then if you if you think about it, you could just be centered and not be spending so much time buying stuff and not so much time getting rid of stuff. So a lot of um, Capricorns are going to be thinking about this. And um, one Capricorn I know um, is uh, an example of this. She is trying to go for this whole year, of course not having known about these planetary placements, just the feeling inside of her, was that she, she wanted to go this year without really buying anything without really buying anything that she doesn't really need. Whew, that is a noble effort. But I mention it because many Capricorns are going through this um, revolution, inner revolution of um, shifting their uh, connection to material things and rethinking. There are some Capricorns who have been having a hard time financially, and for you, there's going to be a renewal to your business, new business, new ideas. Um, March is a weird month. There's the, the energy is hurry up and wait. Um, a lot of the personal planets, Mars and Venus and the Sun, are going to be going into Aries. That is actually a lot of the energy behind spring fever. A lot of people think of spring fever as the weather, making people feel rambunctious. And I, I think that there there is something to that as well. But a lot of it's astrological. The sign of Aries is the baby of the zodiac. It's the pioneer. It's the zesty go-getter. And when you have a cluster of personal planets moving into Aries, then there's an inner rambunctiousness that wants to come out. So that is going to be happening while Mercury's still in retrograde. So it's like this surging, wanting to move forward on things, but kind of universal blockages um, interfering or feeling that they're interfering. So my suggestion for this is to um, hold, hold the gold, <laughs> hold and harness as much of that energy and store it. And then once it gets to be April, April 10th, I like the best because that's the new moon in Aries. Um, 
then launch all your big projects and make all your big decisions and move forward on everything. It's just blazing, blazing saddles. So um, there are a couple of aspects in the beginning of the month that I want to mention. Venus is going to square Ju uh, Ju Jupiter and also make a conjunction to Chiron. That's happening March 4th and 5th. I'm mentioning it because um, Capricorns have Pluto transiting in the first house. This is a long-term transit, really long-term transit. But there's, there's um, a self-esteem, a very deep self-esteem, um, I don't want to say issue, but um, awareness that that will be bubbling out. And so if you have noticed that a lot of things in your life have become troublesome because of deeply rooted self-esteem issues, then it might come up pretty strongly March 4th and 5th, or the days before and after. Any transits that are happening on a certain day officially, many people feel them before, many people feel them after. So um, around that time in the beginning of March, there, there are these aspects of self-esteem and um, how you see yourself and other people see you. It's not a really good time to make a decision to do something permanent to alter your appearance. So um, cosmetic procedures, um, or anything like that. If you've been thinking about that, then, of course, my, my desire for you is that you can shift the inner issues that are making this feel um, troublesome for you, and you have a lot of energy around being able to do that. But if you absolutely are really going to do that, then wait until April when the energies are more clear, because um, it's just not really conducive in March to try to make decisions like that. It's, it can be very intense emotionally with the way these transits are coming up, and um, feelings of low value or self-worth could be very prominent. I don't believe that anything ever happens in the cosmos to torture us, and that it's not necessarily even something just to get through. They're all seeds, they're fuel cells of potential forward movement. And um, any difficult aspect or any positive aspect. There, it's a fuel cell just waiting to make productive use of it to propel forward, um, either with inner movement or with outer movement. So this is going to be um, this is going to be coming up for a lot of Capricorns. Something else really exciting um, is that Jupiter is about to move into your sixth house. I have this question come up a lot um, that some. Sometimes people think that the sixth house for um, Capricorn, Sun and Capricorn rising, is um, in Gemini, so that officially Jupiter already has been in your sixth house. When you run a solar chart, it doesn't exactly line all the signs up directly on the cusps of the different houses. There's usually a flow of energy. So for the solar chart of Capricorn, seven degrees of Gemini actually officially starts the sixth house. So even though you could say that Jupiter has been in Gemini, which is the sign that rules the Capricorn sixth house, it's not officially, it hasn't officially gotten into the sixth house yet. Um, but it will. It will happen this month, in March. So wherever Jupiter goes, it brings expansion and um, uh, greater possibilities and just a feeling like that. It's just very open and inclusive. So that's going into your house of health. Um, it's also your house of daily work. So if you work for yourself or you get paid based on work that you could do more of every day, you might have a whole year of increase in your work. Um, it's also the house of pets and animals. So you may get more pets um, or um, become more involved with animals. If you do pet sitting or work with pets as work, then that could add to your daily work too. So in March, you're starting a year, about a year transit of Jupiter through the sixth house. Um, it's also the house of discipline and the, the house of yoga and meditation. Well, meditation can be placed in multiple houses, but anything that you do daily, a daily regimen or a daily practice. So you'll have extra energy to expand daily practices, and you can use that for anything that you're interested in, but diet and health is also ruled by the sixth house. So if you've been wanting to um, shift your diet in any way, then it would be really good, um, a good time to have a lot of energy to do that. So I can't see everything in your individual chart. Um, I do astrologically based empowerment consulting. Um, although I am intuitive and I do 
see unseen things and, and have been known to be predictive. I don't focus my work on that element of my, my being. I like to empower people to be able to handle anything that comes their way in the most graceful, productive um, way with the best quality of experience possible. So all of my offerings are based around uh, self-accountability, self-improvement, self-work. Um, and if you want a guide for your self-work, then that's my department. So I have many offerings. Um, my new offering that I was so excited about that I had to re-record because it dominated the last <laughs> horoscope is subliminal um, messaging um, downloads. So you can go to my website, which is the link below this video, and click. Um, then you can click on either self-help solutions or subliminal audios. And you can see the different books that I have. And the audios are really great. You can listen to them in the background. And they can help you be your own boss, improve your money situation, improve your relationships. Um, and you can also contact me if you're interested in um, a consultation to help you improve your relationships and improve your business and change the inner structure that's reflecting into outer problems. Um, I can put together, and I do, this is part of what I do, I put together a power list, an empowerment list of things to focus on and resources specific for your wiring. So I use the astrology as a map um, to, for me to understand your wiring very quickly so that I don't have to take a long time trying to assess where you're at. Um, and then I move right into the empowerment focus. So I hope you have a wonderful March and take good care.